As many of you are undoubtedly aware, offence is taken, not given. This is an important aspect of life, people over the years jumping on bandwagons of moral outrage and hysteria, over sometimes the smallest of things, things as inconsequential as many would know, gender. Quite frankly, it doesn't matter. What truly sets you apart are your actions, and it is those very actions that tell us, casuals like myself, the type of person you truly are and could be. So when somebody sees something and they take offence to it, one must take a moment, assess whether or not there is any validity to why they have taken offence. Although I would argue taking offence is usually because of something somewhat arbitrary, so it's kind of pathetic, really. But you try and work out whether or not there's any substance to why they have taken offence. Understand it to either help them understand why it is folly, or, if there is any validity to it, certainly on larger issues, like racism, for example, maybe offer assistance in tackling the issue, if it is one born with any credibility to it. With this in mind, I want to talk about religion. I'm not going to talk about it too much. But over the years, the face of Jesus, or Jebus to others, has been seen in everything. You could see him in your toast. You could see him in the foam of your glass. You could probably see him in a cloud. Hell, if you squint hard enough, I'm sure you could take the tattoo on Tess Holliday's arm of Miss Piggy. Or is it Marilyn Monroe? I can't tell. Squint hard enough, and I'm sure that could look like Jeebus. I'm sure many people remember Conchita, the stage name of a drag queen who won the 2014 Eurovision Song Contest. Just squint a little, and that's Jesus in a dress. I mention this because Christians generally don't take offence to this. They take offence to other issues, but they don't take offence to this because it's funny. They can laugh it off. I'm sure there are some on some forum somewhere getting absolutely incandescent with rage, spurging out in forums, but we don't hear much of that. However, we do hear of complaints from another religion, another Abrahamic religion, where if they see their symbols used, they get triggered. And it confuses me, to be honest, because... If it features on a flag, say, for Saudi Arabia, but also happens to feature on the flag for ISIS, why is it such a big issue when people put the bunting out for the World Cup that Saudi Arabia's flag happens to be one of many flags featured? People get triggered, and it's only one faith. Hell, in my town, there are not many Muslims. But some turned up because a bakery in my town had bunting, and a Saudi flag happened in there. And that was considered blasphemy of some kind. If the owner hadn't been such a no-nonsense type while eating a bacon sandwich, giving the middle finger, I would have thought he might uh, have been stoned to death. But if memory serves, I do believe he was trying to reassure them that the bacon sandwich was totes halal. (laughs) The reason I mention Islam and how easy it is and how fickle some Muslims are, some, not all, hashtag not all, when it comes to their faith, possibly becoming the butt of a joke. The reason why comes courtesy of Marks and Spencers. Now, rather interestingly, Marks and Spencers is currently going through a little downsizing. Their profits haven't been so good, and that's because their products are far too expensive. I went in there once to buy a vest for my nephew with buttons on the shoulder because of his head shape being a little different. It cost £60 for three of them, and he outgrew them in two weeks. I was quite irritated. Now, Marks and Spencers is like a very high, pricey, not really a supermarket, but they do sell food, so they can be considered one as well sometimes. But they are one of the middle to upper class places people go to. I don't know the American equivalent, I'm afraid. Waitrose is about the same. England's Waitrose. I don't know if America has that. Basically where posh people go to buy their peacock food, and their yachts, and their five-ply toilet paper, three of which would be the aloe vera moist maker, because their bottoms cannot be sore. The reason I now mention their Lou Roll is because a Muslim calls for a boycott of Marks and Spencers, a company that, as I earlier stated, is downsizing, because it has a toilet paper, that is, has a symbol of Allah on it. I'm going to play the video here and talk about it as it plays. He's going to talk. The man is unidentified. We don't know who he is. Quite frankly, it's probably for the best. But in the video, he says, brothers and sisters, every toilet tissue has the name of Allah on it. Let's have a little look at that picture, a little closer up. That is what has triggered this man. It is quite a small set of like three, maybe four lines going down. On Marks and Spencer's own brand three-ply aloe vera toilet tissue, 
which costs £2.50 for a pack. Now, this is the low-grade tier of Marks & Spencer's loo roll, but it's still more expensive than my loo roll. This is the symbol he is claiming it looks like. Let's put them side by side just to get a closer look. I can't be the only person here that thinks, yeah, no, maybe, no. No, it looks like a crease in the paper, especially when you consider, if you look at the printing marks on the side of the paper, on the right side going horizontally, it just looks like a manufacturing mark. But of course, I could be wrong. Take, for example, the roll I use. Here we have Poundland. Yep, I did not buy those because they were reduced to 25p, thereby negating the whole one pound for a roll. Totes. If you look really hard, I mean get really, really close, you can totally see the money. And then we take this other loo roll I like to use, Thug Life. If you get really, really close to it, like really, really close, you can see John Cena. Are you sure about that? Cena sucks. The video attracted a considerable amount of attention on social media, with many supporting this. One person hashtagging it as hashtag boycott Marks and Spencer, with another commenting, no heart, absolutely no heart, just why. It was a misprint, clearly. With others on YouTube, no less, commenting, shame on MNS. I never expected MNS to go so low morally. I support a full boycott of MNS. One Facebook user shared the footage along with a very lengthy caption, which hasn't been included in the Metro article, but there are some quotes from it. This is absolutely disgusting and has caused upset and sadness to me and many people. Because you can't take anything, can you? You can't even, you can't take shit. Lol. It's even more upsetting that they are trying to say that the word is an actual fact, a representation of an aloe vera plant, and, and not the first thought that everyone else had that you'd be wiping your ass with God. <laughs> or you'd be using God's name to wipe your ass. <laughs> there is a petition, by the way, for this demanding the store to change its pattern, which now has more than a thousand signatures, which surprises me. I'm surprised it's not significantly higher since then. Now, as I stated, offence is taken, not given, and I also mentioned not all Muslims took offence to this. One Twitter user called Amina Jane Ishak said, Sorry you've had to deal with such a ridiculous thing, m &S. Yet again, I'm embarrassed by my fellow Muslims. I love your stores and will continue shopping in them for as long as they have a store which won't be long, I'm sure. As far as this all goes, it's something so small, but as always with a number of Muslims, they can't, they can't accept, they can't tolerate anything they believe is an insult to their faith, but they will look for that problem so they have it. You've heard the stories of employers being sued by Muslims who worked a till because she had to handle plastic wrapped bacon or a bottle of alcohol. This kind of nonsense where you look Look for something so you can sue. Look for something so you can moan. Look for something so you can blame. While not exclusive to Muslim, is what we hear a lot about. Along with the terrorism that never gets addressed because we can't talk about Islam. And let's not forget, those committing those horrific acts, sarcasm sign here because I've got to keep it here for retards, are totally not Muslims. Anyway, I would love to know what you think. And if you've seen Muhammad's face in anything, although you can't have a visual representation of that, because that's haram. Remember everyone, Muhammad, the perfect Muslim, was totally not a sex offender. I'm keeping that sarcasm sign up. Please let me know in the comments below, with links if you have them. Now, was there anything else I wanted to talk about? There was a story about a woman getting married. And planning the happiest day of her life, the wedding day, to her one and only true love, her duvet. Well, that's just inappropriate. And I'm not touching that with a barge pole until the wedding happens. And if I don't, Ren will. Link to her channel below. Have a nice day, everyone.